Welcome back. Vegas has a million and one things to do, but did you know we have some fascinating Vegas-style museums that probably won't break the bank like a night of gambling? From mob history to Las Vegas' iconic signs, we have it all done in Vegas-style, which is always a little extra. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're visiting some unique museums in Las Vegas. It's going to be a great time. Come check it out with me. The National Museum of Organized Crime and Law Enforcement, otherwise known as the Mob Museum, is located in downtown Las Vegas. It's housed in the former U.S. Post Office and Federal Courthouse. I was surprised how big it was with three floors and a basement to explore. Please don't forget to support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Be sure to check the Mob Museum's website to stay up to date on current pricing and promotions. I have an audio. If you want to bring your own headset, it's probably a good idea. Otherwise, you just kind of put it up to your ear. We started on the third floor, which features information on the infamous St. Valentine's Day Massacre. There's some great photo ops along the way. Of course, I wanted to be part of a lineup. There are many theaters set up where you can sit and watch for tidbits of mob information. In 1890, the New Orleans chief of police was ambushed. No one ever proved who killed him. It's the immense profits that bootlegging could bring. He and his indispensable first lieutenant, a former bouncer named Al Capone, embarked on a campaign of uniting the gangs of Chicago and laying the foundation for an empire. There are hundreds of artifacts, immersive storylines, and interactive exhibits. You definitely will never get bored here. I, of course, wanted to try everything. <laughs> cool. Hey guys, we're gonna head down to the speakeasy, which is in the basement. The basement is close to 3,000 square feet of space that includes the speakeasy, distillery, and VIP room. Admission to the speakeasy is included in the museum's general admission ticket, but if you just want to visit the speakeasy, all you need is the secret password which you can find on their website. There are a few interactive experiences you can try. Today we did the distillery tour and tasting. Here we got to learn about the origins of Prohibition and we had a chance to try some moonshine. Just gonna take one of each of the colors there. And it's in the order that we're gonna try them. Uh, plain moonshine, cinnamon moonshine, and then the uh, moonshine cordial ginger jake. The first time. So salute, toss the back out. Did you? But if you shot want the whole flavor in the back, we're gonna take a How small it? taste. <laughs> <first. Just hold laughs> what? They'll acclimate the palate. It's a fancy way Ooh. of saying we're gonna numb off some of those taste buds temporarily. Ooh. Over a hundred years ago, and prohibition's rolling along, full swing. If you don't have a lot of money, this is about all you could afford. Hey guys, I thought that was fun, and I do. You do feel a little. I feel a little tipsy. A happy tipsy. Okay, you guys, we're gonna head to the second floor, Mob on the Rise. I'm having fun. I'm in some courtroom, I'm excited to see what happens. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover downplayed its very existence, yet by 1950, Organized crime was breaking in over $15 billion a year, much of it from illegal gambling. A special Senate committee was formed to expose and destroy organized crime in America. All right, it's time to head to our next museum. Let's go. We are headed to the Neon Museum. I have a full video on the museum. If you haven't seen it yet, please click the link in the description box below for that video. 
The Neon Museum is basically a place for the elderly signs to retire. It is such a cool experience to walk through to see all the larger than life, colorful vintage signs. I actually feel like I'm walking in a cartoon when I walk through here. If you come to the main boneyard during the day, it's a self-guided tour. It isn't a huge area, but there's a lot to see. Here are the current prices, but always check their website for the most up-to-date information and promotions. There's a guided show at night called Brilliant. It's a 45-minute long show where unrestored signs are illuminated and music and historical footage are incorporated in the show. Here's the pricing for the guided tours at night. Please don't forget to support my channel by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. There are hundreds of interesting and amazing signs here with rich history, but there are some standouts. You'll find the big and bold stardust sign near the entrance of the museum. It was rescued before the property was imploded in 2006. The Green Shack sign dates back to the 1930s. It was one of the first standalone restaurants outside of downtown Las Vegas. And don't miss the Moulin Rouge sign, which was designed by Betty Willis. She also created the iconic Welcome to Las Vegas sign. Okay, it's time to head to our next unique museum. Last but certainly not least is the National Atomic Testing Museum. This museum houses one of the most comprehensive collections of nuclear history. It covers the period from the nation's first nuclear test to the first test at the Nevada test site in 1951 to present day. All right, this is Michael, guys. Hi, Michael. How are you doing today? Pleasure okay. to have you. Thank you. All right, let's go. We're very, the, the museum layout is very chronological. So this starts, the experience starts with the first nuclear weapon ever made. And that is a model of it, an exact model of what they call the gadget. Okay. Tested in New Mexico in uh, August, or excuse me, July of 1945. But that, as I said, is a model. However, that went inside a ballistics casing that you can see across the hall here, and that is an original ballistics casing from 1945 designed for the nuclear bombing of Japan. Oh my gosh, okay. And we can take a little closer look at that. Yeah, let's do it. Originally, they usually designed a bomb, and then they put the explosives inside of it. But when they made the first atomic bomb, that was designed first, and then they made a casing to go around it. Got so it. this has always uh, been a very awkward looking type of casing that it got the name Fat Man because it looks like a big plump <laughs> Fat Man bomb. Yes, it does. But it was designed to go around this very unique uh, first atomic bomb. And Where are we headed to next? We're gonna walk through the experience part of the museum. It's kind of like walking through a tunnel of time, and because it is very chronological, mm -hmm. and it is designed much like a tunnel. Everybody thought we would have a monopoly of nuclear weapons for, for decades. Tell and us about um, Nevada being the testing site. That's really... Well, that's what led to it. When, when Russia tested their first bomb in 1949, it shocked the world. And they, that's when, and if you can stop around, step around the corner here in this map, that's when they set this piece of land aside for nuclear testing. We had been going out to the Pacific to do our nuclear test after World War II ended. And they continued to do that, but logistically it was a nightmare. It was very expensive. For many years, Los Alamos scientists said, we need some place close to test, you know, concept designs. This became the spot. In fact, this was the most deserted area in the entire United States. Yes, these are early tactical nuclear weapons. Uh, we eventually gave up our tactical nuclear weapons. Russia was supposed to give theirs up, but they retained theirs. And of course today, that's a big issue now because with the Ukraine, Ukrainian war, they have weapons that are ready to go on the on a Yeah, and this is something you got to kind of look at and yeah. enjoy over a lot of time. But we break it up by decades. And we don't just talk about the history of nuclear testing, but we talk about the, the culture and the country and all the different facets of history. 
that you know wove into this, this story. Yeah, it the does tell a story. I do like how it's in chronological order. The first part of it actually simulates a nuclear explosion. Okay. And it's about a 10 minute film and it gives you the entire history. Oh, okay. Cool. Right That's really cool, you guys, because there's like air and a puff of what it would feel like if you're actually sitting in front of it. That's scary. So sitting in here, it simulates the experience. It's very cool. Wow. There was never a detonation that you weren't scared. You get to the countdown, and one of those 10, 9, 8, Every thought you can think of goes through your head. You stand looking out in the distance with goggles on, and all of a sudden the sky lights up, everything lights up. And once the light dims a little bit, you can take your goggles off and you see the shock wave coming across the desert. So you watch this wall of dust, very thin dust, racing across the desert at you. And of course, when it gets to you, that's when you hear the first noise from the explosion. Very, very terrible weapon of war. And when you see one, you understand what it can do and why it must never be used, but you understand the value of having it and having your enemies know that you're not afraid to use it. Okay, guys, let's go to the underground testing. I actually think this is really cool. Look at the nuclear weapons test go underground. To be honest, I wasn't sure if I would find the Atomic Testing Museum interesting, but I actually really do think it is. There's so much of the history that I didn't know about. You could easily spend a good one to two hours looking at everything. Here are their hours of operation. To build a nuclear weapon and not have the broad cross section of individuals in you There's didn't so have artificial barriers saying, oh, well, they're press people or they're not scientists. Everyone understood. Thanks so much for hanging out with me again. Until the next video, stay safe. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. If there's any other video you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Let's keep in touch. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at In and Out of Vegas.